We want to look into a scripture in Matthew 23 that the counter-missionary rabbis often attack. And what you'll see is, is this typical with many of the counter-missionary texts, especially counter-missionary rabbi Tovia Singer, is there is information withheld from you that if you knew it would give you a lot better understanding. So here's the key text, Matthew chapter 23, verses 34 and 35. Yeshua speaking, Jesus says this, speaking to the leaders in Jerusalem, because of this, behold, I'm sending you prophets and wise men and Torah scholars. Some of them you'll kill and execute at the stake. Some of them you'll scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. And so upon you shall come all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. So the, the issues are, why is Abel mentioned? What's that got to do with Jewish leaders in Jerusalem? And specifically, the mention of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. Isn't it Zechariah, a, a different Zechariah that was killed between the temple and the altar? Did Jesus or Matthew get them confused in which case the New Testament is not reliable? All right, listen to what Rabbi Singer has to say. We, what Matthew says is that we're responsible for the death of Abel. That's the first person ever murdered in history. To Zechariah, the son of Barachiah. That means the Jews are responsible for everything. That means the Jews killed Abel? Yeah, okay. That's, that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is not saying the Jews killed Abel. Read the text for yourself. Is that what he's saying? No. He's saying rather Abel was the first righteous person killed. Zechariah, he's mentioned in 2 Chronicles 24, the Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, who was killed. He's killed. He's mentioned as a righteous man. And as the books of the Bible may have been ordered then, Genesis, the first book, Second Chronicles, the last book. So it's kind of like an A to Z of righteous people who have been killed through history. Cain killing his brother Abel. And, Cain, and after Cain kills Abel, Abel's blood cries from the ground. So what Yeshua is saying is that there's a culmination that through the centuries, righteous people have been killed all the way back to Abel up until today. And now, by your rejecting of the Son of God, you're about to put him to death. It's all coming on you. It's the culmination of all the righteous bloodshed. That's, that's all he's saying. He's not saying, the Jews killed Abel. You say, yeah, but, but the accusation that the Jews killed prophets and things, well, that's found in traditional Jewish literature. That, that's found in, in Jewish literature. Here, let me give you a sample from, from Talmud and, and Midrash. The Talmud and Midrash teach that the Israelites killed the prophet Hur shortly after receiving the Ten Commandments with some of the texts claiming that the children of Israel killed all the elders as well. The Talmud records that Manasseh, king of Judah, killed Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets of the Hebrew Scriptures. The Scriptures also speak of the people of Israel murdering other prophets like Uriah, son of Shemaiah, and Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, with Talmudic expansions on these biblical accounts as well. So this is, this is our traditions. A Jewish tradition even states that Isaiah's words in Isaiah 115, your hands are full of blood, refers to the murder of Uriah. 1 Kings 18.4 tells us that Jezebel, the queen of Israel, was killing off the Lord's prophets to the point that a righteous man trying to save their lives hid a hundred of them in two caves. Things got so bad that Elijah the prophet said to the Lord, the Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too, 1 Kings 19. The Midrash states that Jeremiah the prophet protested to the Lord, I cannot prophesy about them, meaning the people of Israel. And he says in, in, the, in the Midrash, what prophet went out to them whom they did not seek to kill? So first, Matthew is not saying, Yeshua is not saying the Jews killed Abel. What Toby Singer says is blatantly false. But not only so, this idea of Jerusalem being responsible for bloodshed or of the people of Israel historically killing the prophets, that's found in rabbinic literature, and it's found in the Hebrew Bible itself. All right, so let's look at the real issue, which is, did Matthew, or worse still, Jesus, get confused about the identity of this Zechariah? So let's go to Zechariah chapter 1, 
Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1. And here's how he's introduced. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of Adonai, the word of the Lord, came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Edo. So notice he is called Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Edo. So Berechiah, his father, Edo, his grandfather. Let's go to Ezra, chapter 5, verse 1. Now, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet, the son of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Ezra 5, 1. Got it? So he is called, this Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, or, using his grandfather, the son of Edo. That's who Jesus is referring to in Matthew 23, Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. But we have no record that he was killed. There is no Jewish tradition that says he was killed or martyred. So did Jesus speak of him mistakenly? Is this proof that the New Testament is in error? It seems that Yeshua was referring to this passage, 2 Chronicles 24, verses 17 to 22. After the death of Jehoiada, the chiefs of Judah came and bowed down to the king. Then the king listened to them. They forsook the house of Adonai, the god of their fathers, and served the Asherah poles and the idols. Wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their guilt. Adonai sent prophets to them to bring them back to him. And although they admonished him, they would not listen. Then the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God, came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. Ah, this is somebody different. This is a different Zechariah. The Spirit came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the Kohen, the priest. He stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, why do you transgress the mitzvot of Adonai, the commandments of the Lord? You will not succeed, because you have forsaken Adonai, has also forsaken you. But they conspired against him. And by order of the king, they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the house of Adonai. Thus King Josiah disregarded the loyalty which his father Jehoiada had shown to him and slew Jehoiada's son, As he was dying, he said, may Adonai, may the Lord see and avenge. So go back to Matthew 23, verse 35. And so upon you shall come all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. So what does Tovia Singer say about this saying? Obviously, a blatant error Jesus and or Matthew get the two Zechariahs confused. This is supposed to be inspired literature. Obviously, it's not. Run from it. Listen to what he says. There's no question Hashem twisted the minds of the writers of the New Testament so that people would right away see and know that this is not of God. He, the, the Christian Bible is so littered, riddled with just Dumb mistakes, silly mistakes, silly mistakes that could have been corrected. There's no question in my mind that Hashem did that so that any person who really loves Hashem and could find Christianity attractive, all these religions can be very attractive, so a person can see and say, I'm, and leave skid marks and get out of there. Ah, is that right? Should you leave skid marks and run from the New Testament? No, no, no. Now, I don't know if Rabbi Singer knows the answers to these things and didn't tell you, because if you knew, then you wouldn't be dissuaded uh, from your faith and persuaded to follow what he's saying. I don't know if he knows them and is withholding this information or if he's not aware, but there are simple answers to these problems. Not only so, but there are bigger problems for traditional Jews making a worse mistake about the two Zechariahs. Rabbi Singer say, Hightail it out of there, leave rabbinic Judaism. Okay, so we know that the same passage is found in Luke's gospel, and it just mentions Zechariah. It doesn't mention the son of Berechiah. So how do we get son of Berechiah if it seems to be the wrong person? Well, here's something really interesting. There are ancient traditions that Matthew originally composed the sayings of Jesus in Hebrew. Some would say Aramaic, but not in Greek. And that that was circulated among the early believers And that even by the fourth century, Jerome, early church leader, said that he saw the Hebrew copy among Jewish followers of Jesus. And what's interesting is, according to our understanding, that Hebrew copy did not have the son of Berechiah. In other words, 
the original words that Yeshua spoke just said Zechariah. Now, here's something fascinating. There's a book I have here. It's called The Bible, the Talmud, and the New Testament, Elijah Tzvi Soloveitchik's Commentary to the Gospels. You say, Soloveitchik, isn't that the family with Yeshiva University and Rav Soloveitchik, the famous rabbinic dynasty? Yes. This is someone who is part of that dynasty and who in the 1800s wrote a commentary on the New Testament as an Orthodox Jew. And you know what he says? He says, this is just a scribal error in the Greek. That's all. He says in the original Hebrew document, it just said Zechariah. So at some point, these words were added in the Greek erroneously, but the original gospel as it was first transmitted or the sayings of Jesus as first transmitted in Hebrew didn't have that additional information, just said Zechariah. And here it is. He, he puts it in this book. This is a translation of his commentary. Isn't that fascinating? So it could be there's a very simple answer, that this is simply a scribal error that entered in the Greek. And that's why you have some Greek manuscripts that do not have son of Berechiah. You say, yeah, but, but how trustworthy is this? Well, more trustworthy than the rabbinic literature. You say, what do you mean? Let's take a look at the Targum to Lamentations. Lamentations 2.20. Look at what the Targum says. So this is the early Aramaic translation. See, O Lord, and observe from heaven against whom you have turned. Thus is it right for the daughters of Israel to eat the fruit of their wombs due to starvation, lovely children wrapped in fine linen? The attribute of justice replied and said, Is it right to kill priest and prophet in the temple of the Lord as when you killed, look at this, in the temple of the Lord, Zechariah, son of Edo, the high priest, and faithful prophet in the temple of the Lord on the day of atonement because he told you not to do evil before the Lord. Hang on. The Targum is making the same mistake that our Greek text of Matthew makes. It is confusing the two Zechariahs or merging them into one person. They live several centuries apart. The Targum does this. Zechariah, son of Edo. That's the prophet. That's Zechariah, son of Berechiah. Same person. So should you throw the Targums out then? Now, remember that you read a rabbinic Bible, you've got the Hebrew right here and the Targum right next to it. This is sacred stuff, but according to Rabbi Singer, you should run from this. Oh, oh it gets worse. Rabbi Akiva, one of the greatest leaders in Jewish history, one of the great sages of the Talmud, makes an even worse mistake. So let's take a look at this in, in the Talmud. This is Makot 24b. When they arrived at the temple, they saw a fox that emerged from the site of the Holy of Holies. They began weeping, and Rabbi Akiva was laughing. They said to him, for what reason are you laughing? Rabbi Akiva said to them, for what reason are you weeping? They said to him, this is the place concerning which it is written, and the non-priest who approaches shall die. Numbers, first chapter. And now fox is walking it. Shall we not weep? Rabbi Akiva said to them, this is why I'm laughing. As it is written, when God, and this is the expanded translation of, of Rabbi Adin Stajchas. As it is written, when God revealed the future to the prophet Isaiah, and I will take to me faithful witnesses to attest Uriah the priest and Zechariah, the son of Uberachiah. It's a similar name, but not the same. Isaiah 8, 2. Now, what is the connection between Uriah and Zechariah? He clarifies the difficulty. Uriah prophesied during the first temple period, and Zechariah prophesied during the second temple period as he was among those who returned to Zion from Babylonia. Rather, the verse established that fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah is dependent on fulfillment of the prophecy of Uriah. Hang on! Stop Stop the music here. Hang on. Isaiah, so I met someone in his day, days of the first temple, someone who would be a witness to an event about to take place, and it is this man, Zechariah. This has nothing to do with the prophet Zechariah, who prophesied a couple centuries later. Rabbi Akiva in the Talmud gets two Zechariahs confused, but in an even more blatant and outrageous way. Oh, but it gets worse. Look at this. In the pro this is Rabbi Akiva. In the prophecy of Uriah, it is written, therefore for your sake, Zion shall be plowed as a field and Jerusalem shall become rubble and the Temple Mount as the high places of a forest where foxes are found. 
There has been a tradition that this was prophesied by Uriah. And the prophecy of Zechariah is written, there shall yet be elderly men and elderly women sitting in the streets of Jerusalem until the prophecy of Uriah with regard to the destruction of the city was fulfilled. I was afraid that the prophecy of Zechariah would not be fulfilled as the two prophecies are linked. Now that the prophecy of Uriah was fulfilled, it is evident that the prophecy of Zechariah remains valid. Well, this is one big problem. Micah 3.12 is Micah. There is no reference to a prophet Uriah speaking those words. Ever. Rabbi Akiva gets them confused. He confuses the words of Micah, quoted in Jeremiah 26 as well, where a prophet named Uriah is mentioned. He confuses that as if Uriah actually said them. Go, if you're a Talmudic student, go see what Tosafos has to say to this. Go, go see how they have to try to figure out, well, we don't actually have that he said it, but here's why we believe that he said it. Now you're going to turn around and criticize the New Testament? Now you're going to turn around and say the New Testament is unreliable? Now you're going to turn around like Rabbi Singer does and say, flee, run from it. God has twisted the minds of the authors of the New Testament to leave all these errors. What do you do with these errors? Right here in the Targum and even more outstandingly in the Talmud. So here's what I say. Use equal weights and measures. Use the same interpretive methods to work out these difficulties. And what you'll find is that there are good, solid, rational, textual, scientific answers for these challenges to the authority and reliability of the New Testament. The verse in Matthew presents no problem at all. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I really want to encourage you to check out our 22-hour detailed course. It's called Countering the Counter Missionaries comes with this beautiful, in-depth study guide. And what we do here is we take you through the positive arguments that Jesus Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel. And then systematically, we go through all the major arguments of counter missionaries like Rabbi Tovia Singer. We show you where you're not getting the truth from them. We bring you back to the truth of scripture. We even deal with the rabbinic claim that there is an oral law going back in unbroken form all the way to Moses and Mount Sinai. And it's 22 hours, in fact, these days, you get it all just on one flash drive. So check this out. You'll find it to be so helpful, so life-giving, so edifying, and it'll help you to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind as well.